And we pray that the Most High of Israel redeem us from all of our iniquities. So, happy Sabbath, first of all, to we thank the Most High and His Son, and through His Spirit, and through His Spirit, we pray that all that are not here can join in and be attentive. Um, today we're going to talk about the leaven of hypocrisy. We've already defined over this month, going through Passover, that leaven is the sin. And we went through the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which the practice of it um, under the Old Covenant was to remove all the leaven, yeast-filled products out of your, out of your home. Under the New Covenant, under Christ, it's more focused in which it always should have been the focus to get the sin out of your mortal bodies, taking the sin out of you as opposed to worrying about what's in your house. So it was just symbolic. So once you went through the practice, however, of the schoolmaster teaching you about taking out sin, taking out yeast, you found... Um, out that there was a lot of products that had yeast in them. So you were you not, in this day and time, couldn't eat all the cookies and the cupcakes and the regular cakes and, the, and most of our bread products. All of that has yeast or a rising agent in it was off limits. So if you take that same understanding and apply it to the sin in your body, and you're really being honest with yourself, you, you might see that there's some covetousness in you. You might see that, there, you, that you've been a, a liar. You might see that you've been a pretender, being fake in this, situa in this, in this truth now. Um, coming from Sunday church, it's easy to see and point out those people, but we came out of those churches, all praises to the Most High, that he decided to wake us up so that we can quit being hypocrites. Hypocrites can read the word, so let's say, for instance, Deuteronomy 14 and 8, that says that we're not permitted to eat pork and swine, but then turn around and eat it. Now, if you're following the God of the Scriptures, the true power of the Scriptures, then you won't be eating those things that are abominable unto the Most High. You won't live a lifestyle that's abominable to the Most High, and that's what makes us hypocrites. To say one thing and to do another thing. So we don't want to be found guilty of that because all throughout, and we didn't get them all today, but all throughout Scripture, you see how Christ is calling them Pharisees hypocrites. They gloried in their self-righteousness. They were righteous before their eyes and had all the Scriptures that we have up until the book of Acts. Well, actually up until the end of the Apocrypha. Then Christ comes on the scene in the flesh and starts explaining a little bit further about who he is, who he represents. Um, like we always point out the deal with adultery. He tells us, hey, um, well, you heard the law in, in Exodus 20 tells us that we shouldn't commit adultery. But Christ comes in and he says, if you look upon a woman with lust in your eye, you have committed adultery in your heart. So you can say you're not looking at that woman with lust in your heart, but if you're admiring someone else's curves and, and even, even her mind, for instance, and it's not your wife and you are married, then you're committing adultery. And if you don't think you are, then you're being hypocritical and you're deceived in your own mind. So this lesson is just to let us see the leaven or the sin of hypocrisy and, and continue to examine ourselves because we take communion all the time. And communion is about you, yourself, and you. Me, myself, and I. Right? Being truthful with myself saying, hey, this, is, this part of me is, is, is not pleasing unto the Most High. This can keep me out of, out, of, out of the kingdom. So you're wasting your time if you're not being honest to yourself. And that's what we want to spend our time doing each and every, at least Sabbath, trying to figure out why we're here, why we're doing what we're doing, and not being hypocritical about what we're doing, but being totally honest. 
And then we'll see souls come in because they'll be able to see the finished product. They won't say that's the same old demand. They, that's the same old Ronald. He ain't doing nothing different but not eating pork and not worship going to church on Sunday. But besides that, he or she is the same person. We don't need that testimony on earth. So let's let's dive into this lesson. And Uncle Ronald will stick with you for now. Then we'll go over and get Isaac warmed up. And just so you know what I'm trying to do, um trying to test out this Facebook live thing. We got a page that's thoroughly totally built for um this class. And so it's just another tool hopefully that we can use in the future. Only people that's members now is me and Nicole. It is a closed group and we'll see how it works as we move forward. I'll praise this to the most high in Christ. Let's start in Luke chapter twelve. You won't have much warming up to do. Uncle Ronald, we just want the first verse. In Luke chapter twelve. Go ahead. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together in innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon, one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware of the eleven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Right, he he came out on the top of it talking about the Pharisees because these were self-righteous people, people that had the truth of the scriptures, people that knew the Hebrew, people that wore fringes and blue borders, women that covered their heads, none of them made pork. They knew the truth of the scriptures. They're not as we are coming out of Sunday church, if you will, or not coming out of church, but coming out of this society not knowing. So he's telling his disciples, beware of the leaven of the, of the, um, of the uh, Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Because you, if you read through the scripture, you'll find out these individuals would preach one thing and live another thing or come up with their own precepts, the precepts of men, and ignore the precepts of the Most High. But they're steady on governing the people or trying to govern the people according to the Scriptures. They were trying to kill Christ. And what does the law tell us? Thou shalt not... Exactly. So how are you the leader of a church and you trying to kill somebody? That makes you a hypocrite. Now let's go over to Maccabees, Second Maccabees in the Apocrypha. And Sister Bobby, please forgive me for not downloading another copy or at least looking at yours. You know how work gets us. But um I'll make sure you have it. But try to look it up. Hopefully it's there. Second Maccabees. And we're going to start in chapter 6. In verse 18. And go ahead. Eleazar. Eliezer, one of the principal scribes, principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance. countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. Now he's constrained to do this. Now let's look at his his title. He's a, he's a principal scribe, an aged man, so he hasn't is not a young man, someone who's fresh in this and well-favored countenance, meaning they looked upon him as a wise person in the truth, if you will. And it says, was constrained to open his mouth to eat swine's flesh. Go ahead. And those that don't know what swine is, it's pig. Go ahead. But 
but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained from such an abomination spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. So this is how he lived his life. Choosing rather to die gloriously. He looked at it. Most of us in this situation, if we know we're going to get killed for something, we're going to go ahead, and I'm talking about physically dying, we're going to go ahead and give in. And this is over what people would say. It's just a pork chop. It's just a piece of bacon. But he said he was choosing to die gloriously than to live stained with an abomination. And we got to look at these things. What the Most High says is an abomination that's what it is. Those that uh, turn their ear from hearing the law, the scripture says even their prayers are an abomination. The Most High is not hearing that. He says he hears, the, he hears not a sinner. So as we know, the definition of sin is those that transgress the law. That's sin. Go ahead. As it be, proves them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. Right. It's not lawful for us to taste these things. Go ahead. But they that have the charge of that wicked feast or the old acquaintance they had with the, man, with the man, taking him aside, he sought him to bring flesh of his own pro provision. Mm hmm such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So these acquaintances wanted him to be a, a pretender. We got that up there, right? They wanted him to act like he's eating swine's flesh so that he could save his own life. So we're just going to go get you some of this, uh, some, some chicken, and it looks a little bit like the pig, and you're just going to act like you ate some pig. That's what they wanted him to do. Now let's go over to Sirach in, in the Apocrypha. Stay with us, Isaac. Ecclesiasticus is the, the correct title in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, and we want one verse, verse 7. Go ahead. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and not be hasty to credit him. Right. Don't be quick to credit him. But how do you think we're going to be able to prove our friends? Through Well, you're proving your friend. But yes, through the word, meaning if they're keeping these commandments, then you, you can walk together because you agree. If they're keeping the words of Christ... You can walk together because you agree. If they're keeping the commandments but they don't they don't walk with Christ, then you got a problem. So you gotta prove your friends. You can't be quick to say, Yeah, this is this is my this is my, my new my new whatever you want to call them, friend. They gotta be proved through the scriptures. There's gonna be a lot of people that's in this walk. There's many spirits in the world that act like they're doing this thing for for, uh, for real. But over time, if you continue to watch them, the women putting back on the pants, slipping back on wedding rings, they're taught against these things. We're not talking about some lay person. She actually taught against these things. And now she's wearing it again. So what does that make her? A hypocrite. And so we got to make sure that we don't teach things and then go against them. Because the world is going to be quick to point that finger at you. No matter how many he's pointing back at them, they're going to point that script, that, those, uh, that finger and say, listen, you're not um, walking out what you preach. Now let's go over to chapter 9, verse 10. So we want to prove our friends through the scriptures. Otherwise, they are acquaintances. Because acquaintances, they will tell you in a heartbeat, to sacrifice. The scripture says it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. So we want to be obedient unto the Most High in His Word. And those that are being obedient unto the Most High in His words, those are your and those are your friends. But Christ put it this way, who is my mother? Who is my father? 
but those that do the will of the Most High. So he, he, he went on that level with it. It comes down to your family can't even walk with you. Because how can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, uh, Sirach, or Ecclesiastes 9, and verse 10, Isaac. Forsake not an old friend, for the new friend is not comparable to him. A new friend is, a new, is as new wine. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. So, we don't want to cast away friendships because they've been proven. And we're talking about proving them again through the scriptures. But read that one more time because I wasn't there yet. <laughs> Chapter 9 and verse 10. Go ahead, one more time for me. Forsake not an old friend, for the new friend is not comparable to him. A new friend is as new wine. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. All right, when it grows and it matures in this thing, then you guys can get along well. But when you first come into the truth and you got to tell people, no, you can't do that. No, this, this will lead you to hell. Uh, no, this is not the way that the Most High intended for, for it to be. It's hard for them to even be friends with you. But over time, as the Most High begins to open up their minds through the scriptures, then you begin to walk together a little bit more easy. Because everybody's doing the same thing, believing the same thing. They were all on one accord. They weren't coming with different doctrines trying to confuse each other. Everybody had the same mind, which is the mind of Christ. So you want to you want to you want to strive with your friends, but don't be so quick to put that title on them, especially if they're new in this thing, cuz you're going to have to be long suffering with them. But it's not comparable to an old friend. An old friend that you got you got history with, and, and even outside of the truth. But you you have history with you just trust them. You you not talk to them for a while. And you get together and it's like a day never passed. Now let's go over to uh, Ecclesiasticus, same book, but verse uh, chapter thirty seven. And we want verses 1 through 4, Isaac. Every friend saith, I am his friend also, but there is a friend which is only a friend in name. You hear that? Some people, they'll yoke up with you. They'll say you're friends, especially if you got something that they want. They're coveting something. So they, they're going to become, uh, become your friend. And when that season's over... Like, y'all having tax season right now? Yeah, they'll, they'll yoke up with you. But how many of them people that, on the friend level, does that much talking and fellowship after this season is over? So it's just for a time period. Some of us only have friends during, during football season. Some of us only have friends when it comes to, if you go to church on Easter and Christmas, when we used to do that foolishness. You see people you ain't seen in a long time. Go ahead. Not a great unto death when a companion and friend is turned into an enemy. Is it not? And that can be just done through doctrine. Like, man, you 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 don't believe you really you really didn't jumped off the tracks over here. Because how can you walk together? Back to Amos three and three. How can you walk together? And it causes a rift between everybody. That's the main thing when it happens in marriage. It tears up a whole family. It causes a divorce because those people just don't agree no more. That's why the Most High has to be the, the center of, of the relationship. And everybody going to get the same goal for real and not pretending to go do it. Go ahead. O oh, wicked imagination, whence canst thou in, in to cover the earth with deceit? There is a companion with which... Rejoice. Rejoices. Rejoices in the prosperity of a friend that in the time of trouble will be against him. Right. 
Like we just said, they'll be with you until something else pops off. Something else comes along better. So you got to prove your friends. Because there's fake people in the earth. There's fake believers in the earth. Very serious thing. This is how you get hypocrisy and you find out who's being hypocrites. All right, back to uh, 2 Maccabees, chapter 6. And Ron will pick up in verse 20, 26 rather. 26? Yes, sir. 26 30? Yes, sir. Yes, go up to 21 through 25. 2 Maccabees 6, 21 through 25. Second Maccabees chapter chapter twenty six twenty one to twenty five. But they that have the charge of the wicked beast, or the old acquaintance they have with the man, taking him aside, he saw him to bring flesh of his own provision. Such such as was lawful him to use and make as if it and make as if make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So these unlawful feasts, just so you know, are wicked feasts, are feasts that are called by man. We don't call them wicked because this world is painting them to be um, something that's to be rejoiced of, but we call they call them Christmas and Thanksgiving and Fourth of July's and Labor Days and all of those days. Those are wicked feasts. Those are not feasts that you can read about in these scriptures. So the righteous feast is, you know, outlined in Leviticus 23 and throughout the scripture in Esther and in, in this Apocrypha, like the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Purim, um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread that we just got out of. All of that you can find in scripture, but you can't find these wicked feasts. But this, this acquaintance, again, is trying to get him to um, pretend like he ate the flesh to save his own life. Verse 22. Verse 22. That, that in so doing he might be delivered from death, and for the old friendship with him by favor. 23. But he began to consider the speaking, and as the king, his age, and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head. Whereunto he was come, and his most honest education from the child, or rather, the holy law made and given by God. Therefore he answered accordingly, and while them straight ways to send him to the grave. Mm -hmm. They were gonna kill him. For not for not eating this swine's flesh. This is how serious it is when your enemy gets a hold of what the truth is. Now, we're, we're just in a land of deception. But just look how many products that they're promoting bacon on. I said this last week. They act like the Big Neck was no good without the bacon. Now they got a commercial actually saying it. What's the Big Mac without bacon? But we have to have bacon on absolutely everything. And the world is promoting it as such. Go ahead. Verse 24. For when becoming not our age, said he, in, in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, Eleazar, no. Eleazar being four score years old and ten, were now gone to a strange religion. 25. And so they thought, and, and so they drew my hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and moment longer should be deceived by me. And I gave a stain to my old age 
and make it abominable. So he wasn't going to allow this to be seen even by the younger people. He understood how he had to carry himself for younger generations. And that's how we need to be. We have to care what other folks is witnessing around us. Because if they can't see Christ in us, then the world is definitely not going to show them. We are his ambassadors in the earth. We are the ones that's supposed to be carrying his Holy Spirit. And we have to be willing to die just like Christ did for this thing. We got to take that into account when we're when we're when we're thinking about what we're doing. This is not a a religion where it's like you know you sign up to be a Buddhist this week, and then you find out that's wrong. You go over to be a Muslim, then you go over to Sunday church and you know do the Christianity thing. This this can cost you your life. They hated Christ, and he said if they hated me first, what more do you think they're going to do to you if you're doing it right? Because it's going to be like, no, I can't go to that birthday party. Why can't I? Well, not only can I go, but you shouldn't be going either. You shouldn't be doing these things either. Well, what about Christmas dinner? What about it? That's a pagan feast day. That's not in my scriptures. As a matter of fact, it's in my scriptures, but it, it says that you desecrated my temple on the 25th of December. Not that it was Christ's birthday. And that we're supposed to keep it and do it like commandments. So we're going to throw away the laws and everything that the Most High said to do, and we're going to keep this man-made stuff and call it Christ. And then you get to reading this book, and you're like, oh, wow, I was the biggest hypocrite. And that's what he's saying. I would have been a hypocrite if I'd have tried to save my own life and eat this swine's flesh. If I'd have let the young ones see, like, yeah, when it comes to death, if they're going to kill you, then go ahead and do it what's necessary. No greater love than a man to lay down his life for a friend. So if you lay down your life for a friend and you're showing this friend like, man, even when it comes all the way down to eating pork in this example, hey, if I got to die, I got to die. It's an abominable thing unto the Most High. Did you read through 25? Yes. Let's go over to Hebrews. Isaac, pick up this one verse. And then we're going right back, so Ronald, hold that spot. Hebrews 11 and 35. What does it say? <coughs> Bless you. Women received their dead, their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better re resurrection. What is a better resurrection? Eternal life. Absolutely. So they'd rather be tortured Go ahead and die this little first death and be raised again when the Most High comes back, his son comes back for everlasting life. Not, not, not sacrifice the resurrection just so you can keep breathing in this little body. We got to realize we're always living to live again. That's one of the quotes I actually got out of Christian church. But we are living to live again. And if you live right to live again, then you will make the kingdom. If you make live wrong or wickedly, and wicked is anything against these scriptures. So wearing pants for women is wicked. Wearing a dress for a man is wicked. Eating crab legs is wicked. Sin is just wicked. It'll keep you out of the kingdom. So we want to we want to watch this hypocrisy and not be like a Pharisee and say we're doing something when we're not, or saying we believe something when we really don't, because it's gonna come out in your actions. Remember that old saying, "Actions speak louder than words." It's gonna show who believes and who don't. Back to 
Back to Second Maccabees chapter six, and now I'm in the race by twenty-six to thirty. All righty, go ahead. Second Maccabees, Maccabees chapter six, verse twenty-six to thirty. Yes, sir. Four. With thought for the present time, I should be delivered from the punishment of men. Yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty. You see that? So he would have gotten away from the punishment of man, but who is he going to deal with when he once he goes to sleep and is resurrected? And that's how we got to always think. <coughs> like man. It's cold outside. I don't feel like wearing no dress today. But if something happened to me on them streets and I perish, I'm not trying to wake up and deal with the most high. Just mindset. Same thing with these fringes. We're commanded to wear them. Would you rather be found guilty in front of man, not being able to answer a question or whatever the case it is, or would you rather be found guilty in front of God who can throw you in the lake of fire? We can't say we believe something and not do it 110. Go ahead. Verse 27. Wherefore now, man, manfully changing his life, life. Changing his life mm -hmm. I will show myself such in one, such in one as mine age required. Mm -hmm. 28. And leave a notable example to such as young, such, such as, as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy law. See how he felt about the law? He called it honorable and holy. But he had to keep on a good reputation. I can't, I can't fall willingly, knowingly, in front of people that are younger than me. My children are watching. Isaac's younger than me. He's watching. We got to think about how does this affect others? Read that verse again. Verse 28. And leave a noble example to such as be, such, such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy law. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And for when he said, and for when he had said these words immediately, he went to the torment. He went to the torment. Now, this, is a, this is looking Christ-like. Because Christ could have did a whole lot of things to deliver his own self. Right? But he didn't want to be a hypocrite. And he wasn't a hypocrite. So he went through all the torment for us. They didn't just sling him up on the cross and wait for him to die. They beat that dude to death. To the cuss of it. Go ahead. Verse 29. They that led him changing the good will they bear him a little before into hatred. Because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they brought from the desperate mind. Mm -hmm. 30. For when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is, it is manifest unto the Lord that have the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I know, or I now endure sore pain in my body by being beaten. But in soul am I, but in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear Him. That's right. See? We can't worry about what these people can do to this body. It's the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not just being reverencing him, but actually fearing that he has the power to put you somewhere. Build a body for you to withstand being in that place. We all think that we're in charge and we're making decisions, but it's the most high up there saying, okay, reprobate my... That person don't believe. Oh, I'm going to give this dude or this lady my spirit. They believe. Okay, let me throw this test out in front of him. Let me throw this stumbling stone out and see if he's going to still believe. 
or she's going to still walk with me. And then the test comes out. Some fail. Up, oh, reprobate mine. Some pass the test. Oh, let me strengthen my, 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 my child. We want to be in control so bad. We want to be God so bad. But we don't have what it takes to be the most high, ultimately. So I would petition folks to stop trying to even be the God of your life because that makes you walking in idolatry. Because you know more than the most high. Which is going to keep me, you, and everybody else that think that way out of the kingdom. Do we finish that verse? Yeah. All right, let's go to and hold that right quick because we're coming back, but we're going to go over to John now in the scriptures, in the Bible. John chapter 1, Isaac, and we're going to start in verse 43. Go ahead. The day following Jesus would go go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Mm -hmm. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So they were all looking. This is how we know that the prophets actually knew about Christ, knew about the refer uh, resurrection, as did Moses. Because everybody, if you read through these stories, in these scriptures rather, you're going to see that they say, are you that prophet? They understood it. We're the ones over here on the outside that's so far away removed from the scriptures that we don't understand what was really going on. So the, the people get in here nowadays and they just make up stories. Like we did the virgin birth. And who's this, this scripture say he was the son of? Joseph. That's right. Out of the line of David. The seed line of David. Verse 46. Samuel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Come and see. Come take a look for yourself. Go ahead. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom, no, in whom is no guile. guile. Meaning there's no deceit in his brother. Go ahead. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. And what did Nathaniel say? Nathaniel answered and said, saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. See, what we got to understand from this text is that Christ knows you. When you're not even looking and knowing that he's watching, he's watching. He saw Nathaniel under the fig tree, and that's all he had to say to him. And he's watching us today. So what we're doing in our private times, in our secret lives, or and, and, and in our minds, what we're contemplating on, Christ knows all of that. So we can be a hypocrite in front of one another, but we can't be a hypocrite with the one that counts. And we got to know that too. When you're driving down the street in your car, bobbing your head to whatever, hopefully it's something righteous, something clean, hopefully. But Christ sees all of that. Then you come in the house with your fringes and your blue borders and talking about all praises to the Most High Christ, blessed and all that. But you had something else going through your mind 20 minutes before. But Christ knew. 
And that's what we got to keep in mind and always know that we're not getting away with anything. Our hypocrisy can only fool man. Because it's going to be tested. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. All right, that was nothing. Go ahead. Actually, that's it, right? All right, go now. Let's go over to four, John four. John four, and start in verse one. Go ahead. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized, baptized not, but his disciples. So Jesus wasn't baptizing, but more people were coming under this doctrine than what the Pharisees was doing, and more than what John the Baptist had did. John the Baptist just came to pay the way, repent. Tell the people to repent, for the kingdom of God was at hand. Christ comes to not only baptize his disciples with water, but also with the Holy Spirit, as we go into the book of Acts. Go ahead. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then come, cometh he, he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, Sakar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm-hmm. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the wall, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus say, saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Mm -hmm. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Okay, so as in Sunday church, they taught us that this is a, a woman of another nation. She's not a Jew, so... But let's keep reading and see what she says. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest, would, wouldest have back of him, and he would have given thee living water. Right. If you knew who you were talking to, you would ask for more than just a drink. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Mm -hmm. Now here's verse 12. This is what she says. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So if she's the descendant of Jacob, what is she? An Israelite. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which we get the 12... Tribes of Israel. Go ahead. What else she say? Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in, the, in a be him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And this is how it is in the truth. Once you come into the truth that that you got to keep the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, and you also understand that you gotta that you gotta pay attention to Christ, meaning listen to what He says and do what He says, then you're not thirsting anymore. You're not. For me, I jump from church to church to church to church looking 
somebody come out with a new doctrine or a nicer tone of speech or something like that, go over there. They These people are in the promoting folks in the ministry or these people wanting to make you just sit up under, uh, just jumping around, whatever the reason was. But now that you're in the truth, your thirst should be quenched. Only thing that we got questions about is like, for instance, this is not a Samaritan woman that's not of the uh, nation of Israel, of the 12 tribes, if you read it in, in, in with understanding. But we got to detangle all of that nonsense that they taught us, like they did with the virgin birth and whatnot. We got to precept it out so we can get understanding. So now that we got understanding, we know that Christ is talking to an Israelite woman. We, we're, we're having our thirst quenched each and every week. Fifteen. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Right. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. <coughs> The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saidest thou truly. Right. So, <laughs> once again, he read her, what, uh, her life. Just like he told Nathaniel. It was a little nicer. He just saw him under a fig tree. But her, yeah, you had five husbands, sister. Go ahead and finish 19, and then I'll finish. The woman saith un unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. They are the prophet, actually. See, they, they've been looking for the prophet, and he comes and tells her her whole life story, basically. What's important, and the sin that she's involved with. Now, he wasn't peeking through the windows, but Christ knows us. And we got to understand that he's not dead. <coughs> Excuse me. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father looking at me right now, looking at me while I'm at work, looking at me while I'm in my car Ubering, looking at me while I'm in my car doing just going from A to B, whatever. He's constantly watching. It's just like us with our natural parents. We used to go to school. We might have got away with some mischief. They didn't call home and make a big deal out of it. We thought everything was a good day. But if my mom only knew or my daddy only knew what I did. So, you know, that old Christmas song, Xmas song, he's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. That's the most high. You got nothing to do with no Santa Claus. And he's going to repay every man for what he's doing on this earth. Whether it be good, or the scriptures say, or whether it be evil. Meaning against the most high's word. Now flip over to 28. Uh, go read verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is this is not this the Christ? Is this not the Messiah that's promised unto us? Is this not the prophet that Moses was talking about? He told me everything that I did. And again, Israel, he's going to be able to tell you everything that you did. Or did not do that you were supposed to do. So it's not a joke. It's not a game. It's not a religion where you can take it or leave it. This is the truth. And that's what we got to understand. We got to live in this truth. Because whenever you treat it like Sunday church, I can be in class or I cannot. Well, no, you command it to be in holy convocation. I can keep this feast day or night. No, no, no. That's no. There's no options. What did we read this week? Let's go to Deuteronomy. I'll go there. 
It's not in the lesson plan, but Deuteronomy chapter 8. We read it earlier this week at the close of the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. 8 and 2. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord God lead these, these 40 years in the wilderness it was to humble us and to prove us, to know that was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. You're here right now, being proven, being humbled. And he's seeing if, hey, are you going to be able to reside in my kingdom or not? Because the way you do it is you practice it now, keeping these commandments, listening to Christ. That's never going to change for the rest of your life. And if you want to live on the good side of the kingdom, you got to start keeping these commandments. You got to start hearing Christ. You got to start living your life for Christ and for other people to see the example because they don't have an example in the world. So that's why it says to be friends with the world is to be enemies with the Most High. Let's go to Revelation. Y'all probably already there. Let me get there. And Ronald, pick up in chapter 2, verse 18. And I am there. Revelation chapter 2, 18 through 23. Mm -hmm. and, unto the, and, and unto the angel of the church in Diatria. 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 Right. These things saith the Son of God, who have his who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. All right, so you know that that goes into another lesson, but that's that's the description. If you don't believe that, then you know you're gonna have a hard time getting in the kingdom. But go ahead. Nineteen. I know thy works in charity and service, and faith, and the patience, and thy works. Right. He said, I know thy works. He knows what you're doing. He knows if you're, you're doing any type of charity. He knows your service. He knows if you truly have faith. Are you being long-suffering? And thy works again. So it matters what we do, what we say. If we really believe, we can't half-hearted, you know, some people wear, ladies wear the skirts out in public, but when they go home, they put on the pants. Because everybody can see you out in public. Or the men with the fringes. They out in public with their fringes at home, but you don't see fringes at all. Or you dressed up all like that, but you really don't believe it in your heart. You're just looking the part for people that's around you. He knows thy works. Go ahead. 19 of 19. And the last to be more than the first. Mm -hmm. 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that one in Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Right. Where is that going on at? He's talking to the church of Thyatira. He says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered thy woman, and he called her Jezebel, which thou calls herself a prophetess. Where do you find prophetesses at these days? Churches. And the Sunday churches. Mm -hmm. To teach. And seduce my servants to commit fornication, which is against the law, and to eat things that are sacrificed unto idols. Sacrifice unto idols is these holidays. Pastor and wife's anniversary. They still probably going to have support. All this stuff that's against the, uh, the, the scriptures. Now, it's like that. It's like the thing with the pants thing. The women want to wear the pants. The women want to. The women want to wear the pants. The women want to preach. But that's not what Christ called you to do. 
you got a bunch of children, if you're being fruitful and multiply, that you're supposed to be teaching. And he even tells you what to teach. Then he turns the men into a bunch of lazy men that don't want to don't want to lead their homes well, don't want to lead the church the right way, and want to walk around with the title "men of God." But it's out of order with what the Scripture says, and Christ says He sees this church. So we got to get in order as a people if we're gonna make this kingdom. Because this is what the scriptures is, is dictating. Not what I'm dictating. And we got to be okay with it. You're a hypocrite if you're not okay with what the scripture says, the roles for each person. you lying to your own self. Go ahead. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her, of her fornication. Right. And she not. Refuse to repent. There's some people in the... I mean, if you can't say that you're sorry, or if you have never can admit that you're wrong, then you are not and you cannot repent. None of us has been right about everything. All the time. Me included. I'm not above these scriptures. I've been wrong plenty. But I can admit it, and hopefully you can too. That means you're walking a repentant life. Not sitting around here thinking you perfect, Patty and Mr. Perfect. Don't work that way. That'll get you in the lake of fire quick. Go ahead. 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into Great tribulation. All of them people are going to get the great tribulation that's listening to that the gospel. And it's saying there's going to be a whole bunch of them. There's going to be some nice women up there preaching tomorrow. In some pants. And all the people that's listening to her is going to be cast into this great tribulation with her. Feel far sorry for them prophets. Because you try to tell them the truth. They ain't going to want to hear it. They ain't going to be ready to drop the mic on you. That's it. I ain't got time for that. And then they're going to turn their ear away from hearing the law, and guess what? They're going to go off and pray, and the Most High ain't never heard them and they ain't listening. Go ahead. Except, except they repent of their deeds. Yeah. You always got a chance to repent. We read it in Psalms. He got plenty, plenty for those who repent. He's ready to redeem us from all unrighteousness. Go ahead. Verse 23. And I will cure her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am the, I am he which search, searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your word. And if we don't know what that looked like... <laughs> Our, our 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 jail cells is filled with a bunch of young people. The most of the, when we saw all of those shootings, especially when Brother Obama was in office, it was a bunch of young people, like one or two older men. Still fit our skin color and description, but it was young people. Because when we do things out of order and the house is out of order, it causes everybody to be out of order in their thinking and their ways. They have no discipline in the home. Daddy's out of place. Mama refused to play her role. And what what example are we then giving to the children? So it becomes this domino effect of foolishness. And that's what we're witnessing in the earth today, a society that's all out of order. Let's go back to Maccabees. You did finish 23, right? Yep. 2 Maccabees chapter 6. And we're going to pick up these two verses, please. 30 and 31. Chapter 6, 30 and 31. Mm-hmm. You there? I'm here. But when he was ready to die with stripes, 
he broke his word and said, It is manifesting to the Lord that take the holy knowledge, that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pain in body by being beaten, but in soul am I well content to suffer things, be things. Because, I fear him. because he fears him. He understood about the resurrection. He understood that there was going to be a time that he had to meet his maker. So he was willing to go ahead and die. He was a believer, for real. Go ahead. 31. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage mm -hmm. and a memorial of virtue. Not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. To all the nation. That's why we're reading about it now. Eleazar was somebody to look up to and how to do this thing. How to be courageous in the Most High. Not, not, not cave in the foolishness and the wickedness of man. Because if you're a true believer, you know Christ is going to wake you up. That's what they claim they're going to be doing on... Easter Sunday morning, celebrating the resurrection. Now, if you truly believe in Christ, you're going to keep his ways, and you know you're going to be resurrected also. And you want to be resurrected to the good side of the kingdom. All right, let's go back to Luke. Luke chapter 12. Isaac. And start in verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they throwed one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid, that shall not be known. Now, in my scriptures, this is, is written in red. If it's written in red, you do what it says. But these are also the words of Christ. And he's telling us, for there will be nothing covered that shall not be revealed. And we got to start believing this. And it will come out in your fruit, because you're like, man, all right, let me, let me get in line. Let me get it together, not just in my physical appearance, but in my in, in the deep things that are deeply rooted inside of me. I got to get this out. Go ahead. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets, closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Right, because when he comes back. And, you know, certain folks went to the lake of fire that you knew that was holier than thou, that was looking the part, being the part. Say, so even, even in the truth that they get in this lake, it's going to be like, man, I thought he was living right. But all his dirt, he must have been violating something. Go ahead. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. They can't do no more after that. I know we all want to live forever. And, you know, nobody want to, you know, deal with funerals and stuff like that. But as far as your righteousness is concerned and the kingdom is concerned, don't be scared of folks that can get rid of this body. Live your life right. And if you die for the Most High, he said that's a glorious death. They tried to shove that, that swine down Ronald's throat, and he spit it out. They smacked him on the head, and then they tried to get him to uh, commit adultery on his wife, and he, he just absolutely wouldn't do it, and then they just killed the brother. Sounds ludicrous, but this world is dark. It's, it's going to get to a point where it's tired of just deceiving. It's going to go back to these scriptures where they're going to try to force you to go against the most high laws. They're going to call it a law, Sunday church. 
And guess what? We're going to be stuck up in this fire station, and they might try to come in here and wipe us all out. Because this is going to be a law to worship on Sunday. Live long enough. You'll see it. Go ahead. Hi. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which, have, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. So Christ is telling us to fear the Mosiah. Because he has the power, like I said, to build you a body, to put you in hell, that you can withstand it forever. And I can't stand the heat, me personally. When the summertime comes, all praise to the Most High. I got a car with air conditioning. Because being miserable is not a choice. Luke 20. And I to keep going. I'm going to start in verse 19. Go ahead. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on, on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. Right. They know when, the people know when you're talking about them. Instead of repenting, they, they want to put hands on Christ. Go ahead. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which just feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his of his words. Let's pull that word right quick. Do you know what feign means? Oh, praises I'm right there. It says to pretend to be affected by. So they sent some, some pretenders in. So read that again. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men. So they, they, they were pretending to be just men. And what did they do? Go ahead. That they might take hold of, of his words. That so they might deliver unto him the power and authority of the governor. Mm -hmm. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and te teachest rightly, neither accept acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the word, the way of God truly. Mm -hmm. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? You go on. But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt, why tempt me he? See, Most High Son knows. We can't, we can't act like we're just trying to seek out knowledge. I just want to get a clear understanding of what's being taught. He knows when you've got something else or another agenda in your heart that you're trying to bring out some foolishness. So he says, he says, he perceived their craft and he said to them, why do you tempt me? And that's the same way we do. When we acting like we want to be in this truth for real, but we just try to get information so we can look good somewhere else in some cases. That's why we said we got to do this thing in truth and sincerity of heart. Because the Most High and the Son can see exactly right through all of us. We got to have a pure heart about this thing. Go ahead. 24. Show me a penny whose image and superscription happened. They entered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar that things which, ye, which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. All right, they can't get around them. Run it under him. You got to pay taxes, pay your taxes. 
honor the law of the land. But hey, you make sure that you don't violate the most high's laws. That means you might have to give up your life. So if they do come up with a Sunday law and we're over here doing what we're supposed to do, we got to understand there might be consequences, which could be our lives. Or you're going to render unto Caesar somebody, oh, it says render unto Caesar's. That doesn't supersede most high's law, statutes, and commandments. Just like Eleazar wouldn't eat that pork, if you go to a restaurant or a get-together and they got pork chops, pork shoulder, ham, bacon wraps, and pig's feet, I guess, all on the menu, then you should know what your choice already is. And if they threaten to kill you, call your wife, Ronald, and tell her you know it's been a good life. You dying for glorious, a glorious death for the Most High, because all they got here is pork. And these people are crazy enough. They said they're going to kill me. Let's go over to Peter. Because he sees our ways. He's a mind reader. So you're not going to be able to go up to the Most High or His Son and act like you've been doing it for real. Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He's going to say, apart from me, you worker of iniquity. I didn't know you. You was committing sin in my name. All right, here we are, Ronald. And First Peter 1 and 22, starting 22. First Peter 1, verse 22 to 25. Yep. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeyed the truth to the Spirit and to unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervent. See? I mean, it's, it's a lot mixed up in there, but it's seeing that you have purified your soul and how we are purifying our souls by obeying the truth, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the dietary laws. Whatever else that you read in here. That's how you purify your soul. Through the Spirit unto unfeigned love. Meaning it's not fake. You're not pretending that you're loving the brethren. And see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. You're going to go hard for your people. You're going to try to figure out whatever way that you have to do it. What's that scripture you like there about going to some nicely and and going to some with the with the uh with the fire of the scripture where's it at the titus Is Jude. And there's only one chapter. And 22 it says, And some have compassion in making a difference. Others are saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments and spotted by the flesh. Was that it? It seemed like there was another part to that. Jude 21. 21. Okay, so it started 21. Keeping yourselves in love of God, looking for the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion in making a difference, right? So you might be able to love them nicely through this thing. And others are saved with fear. You got to tell them, like, man, you keep doing that, you're going to hell. And you got to be able to have the temperance and the understanding of who you're dealing with. And sometimes it can be a little bit of both. They gotta, the fire got to get a little bit hotter, as you tell them. It can't be like it's no big deal not to keep the Sabbath. It's no big deal that you cook this time. It's no big deal that you went and purchased something this time. No. Okay, yeah, that was that time. Now, if you want to go do it, now you're going to do that. If they come back with something else, like, you really don't believe. You don't understand that he will put you in the lake of fire for buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Where were we at? Verse 23. 
First Peter, verse 23. Go ahead. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of un incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Yeah, we're supposed to be born again. That was the purpose of getting in the water. But not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the word of God. This is what you're being brought to life to, and how you're going to live your life which liveth and abideth forever. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will last forever. You can, you can stand on this word. It's going to be, it was here before you, and it's going to be here after you. It's going to be with us forever. Go ahead. Verse 24, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass where it and the flower thereof falls away. Yeah, you eventually going to fade away. You're not going to be here forever. We we just like little, uh, I forgot the correct terminology for it, but grass leaves, it dies every, every year. Right? And yeah, we go over with our lawnmower. The dog comes around and does what it does on it. Right? This is This is how we should look at ourselves. This is just a place that we're passing through. Don't put so much stock in this that you can't be uh, live your life for the most high because you're too wor busy worried about your life and worried about getting along with other folks that don't believe the truth anyway. Go ahead. Verse 25. 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is that we got to preach it unto people. Keep going. No, keep going to chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, okay. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Mm -hmm. Where, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile. All deceit. we got to lay away all the deceit to your own self first and to whoever you're trying to deceive out in the world. All malice. Go ahead. All malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy. And all evil species. <clears throat> As newborn babes desire to see sincere milk of the word that ye may grow, grow thereby. This is the only way you're going to grow in this thing is if you're sincere and you're sincerely seeking the most high. Not with it just for status, not to impress other people, but that you're trying to truly make this kingdom. So everything else get easier as you, as you go along in it. Like if we if we go through the examples. You know, we done been through, you know, Ronald, when you used to like your hot cup of coffee. Can't even have a cup, hot cup of coffee now. It's no big deal, right? That means you've grown. Same thing with buying and selling. Not being able to cook on the, on the, on the Sabbath day. We've grown through those things. Women, as we use the example, it's hard to wear them skirts, right? 24-7. But you've grown to the point where it's no big deal. Covering your heads when you're praying and prophesying in this word. It's no big deal now. That means you've grown. But if you're fighting it, or if you uh, got another agenda in your mind, then it's going to be difficult for you. You're not de desiring the sincere milk of the word coming as a newborn, meaning you know nothing. You're, you're willing to be taught. Go ahead. Three. If so, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Four. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen God and precious. Right. We look at Christ as being precious. He's a living stone. We're willing to fall over this stone and be broken. Like I wasn't right, man. I had to repent. You had to repent about that too. That wasn't right. That that doctrine was wrong. And I'm willing to, hey, if I run into some other foolishness that I believe for a half a millisecond of my life, I'm willing to come back and say I was wrong. It says back in verse 3 that 
if if so ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's willing. You know that you've been in this thing and you, you know yourself and you know that the Most High forgave you. He gave you another chance to get up and say, uh, you know, Most High, I didn't do it yesterday right at, at all. You could have taken me out of my sleep and deemed me as wicked and that would have been the end. But you gave me another chance to get it right today and tomorrow prayerfully. Go ahead. Verse, Verse 5. five. He also, as lively stones, are built up, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And that's what we're doing now. We're no longer going there on the on the, on the Sunday. We're building up our spiritual houses. We're lively stones. So we're His ambassadors in the earth. When they run into you. Not that you should strike fear in people's heart, but if they know anything about you, they're like, no, nah, he don't do that. They go, you should look at it as an honor. Hey, you're in a cult. Yep, I sure am. I'm in the cult of these scriptures. I believe everything you're saying here. Now, if you don't, and all y'all people that go to church on Sunday, for instance, y'all in a bigger cult than I'm in, Y'all don't believe nothing the scripture say. But go ahead. 6, verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, Zion. Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. All right, you're not going to be confused if you stay with Christ. That's what we were saying about the stumbling stones that the Most High has put in the, in the uh, Scriptures. If you stick with Christ, you're not going to fall over those stumbling stones. You're where you're supposed to be. But if you're not walking with Christ, and you're not keeping these law, statutes, and commandments correctly, with a sincere heart and in truth, then, oh, yeah, you're going to be gone with this doctrine, that doctrine, this idea, this part of my imagination. You know, the way we say, Monique, David did it this way. I'm going to run off with that too. It's going to be easy to do that. Go ahead. Verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, for unto them which, dis which be disobedient. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made he had. So he was made the head of the cor corner. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which, which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Yeah, because you bring them back to what Christ said. Christ said there was one wife, one man to one woman. There was no concubines allowed. He said, haven't you heard from the beginning? So when you bring Christ into the, into, the, into the situation, then folks get to stumbling. Oh, it's okay. It's okay to look at women, but don't touch. No, but what Christ said, right? Ain't nothing wrong with praying. People need to hear your prayers. Now, that's dealing with your heart. But Christ said, go into your closet and do that stuff in secret. Because you just want to be heard. Ain't nothing wrong with it though. Now what Christ say? You going to do what you want to do or you going to do what Christ say? He becomes a stumbling stone. Go ahead. Verse 9. For ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We should wake up praising the Most High every day. That, that's that amazing grace right there. You was once blind, but now you can see the truth of these scriptures. And you wonder, like, how did I not see all of this before? This is the Most High waking you up, giving you an opportunity, giving you that grace to get back. That's what that is. Then you can be that 
royal priesthood and a peculiar people. We are peculiar. We don't do nothing the world do. What you mean you don't you don't celebrate your birthday? Are you serious? I think everybody should celebrate. Well, that's what you think. Go read what happened to Job and his kids for celebrating their birthday. Go read in Jeremiah what it said about that Christmas tree. Go read in Jeremiah again what it said about Easter and who that who who that's really worshiping. Because my Bible don't say I can do none of that type stuff. Go ahead. Verse eleven, dearly beloved. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly oh abstain from fleshly lust. Did you read verse ten though? Okay, verse ten. Which in time past were not a people, but now now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but have obtained mercy. Yeah, we got it now. Once you're in the truth. But go ahead. Verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. See, we, we're, we're pilgrims traveling through this land trying to get back to our kingdom. And let me rephrase that. We're pilgrims that were scattered across this land trying to get back to our kingdom. So we don't need to participate in these fleshly lusts that's out in the world. That's going to draw you out of these scriptures. That's going to take you out of the spirit. Let's go over to Ecclesiasticus. And we're on chapter 2. It says, Sirocco, your lesson. Same thing, but chapter 2. In verse 1, it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Understand that when you get in this thing, and you're ready to be sincere, oh, then you're going to see the devil come up and bring his ugly face in different ways in your life. He's going to tempt you. It's up for you to win those battles each and every day of your life. And he's only going to come with sin that's familiar to you. That's how that works. Verse 2. It says, set their heart aright. Meaning you already know that no matter what, I'm keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. I'm going I'm to study these scriptures daily. I'm going to stay in my communion daily. Whatever it is, set your heart aright. And constantly endure. And make no haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased in the last end. At thy last end. Meaning the resurrection. This is not about living for this life. Everything that you're doing is, is, is setting you up. You're, you're, placing, you're, um, you're placing your treasures in heaven. Where it can't be stolen and can't be mildewed and all of that foolishness. Not worried about what's going to happen on, on, in this earth. So if you come to serve the Lord, understand that there's going to be temptations coming your way. But set your heart aright, says the scriptures. Let's go back to Luke. And we are almost there. Prayerfully, none of you are in a rush. That's against the scriptures, too. Just so you know. And we're going to start chapter 6, verse 39. It says, And he spake in parables unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall, not, uh, shall they not both fall into a ditch? That's why you got to Make sure you know what you're listening to, the foundation of where they're coming from. Be prayed up in the situation. Don't be easily yoked with unbelievers. 
All of what this, what you know this scripture says. Because you both can end up in a ditch. The blind can't lead the blind. Says the verse 40. The disciples is not above the mat of is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as the master. So if you want to be perfect, you got to be as your master. And if you're walking in this thing, who is our master? Now we're not above the master. The disciple is not above his master. But Everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Verse 41. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thy own eye? This is, this is part of being a hypocrite. You can see what everybody else is doing wrong. But you can't repent about your own stuff. And guess what? While, while you're pointing out everybody else's stuff, they can see what you got going on. But you 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 can't see that moat, that big old beam in your eye. Forty two. Either either how canest thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the moat <laughs> that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thy own eye. So you're going to go try to help somebody else, and you're the biggest, biggest covetous person there is, the biggest liar there is. But you're going to tell that person they don't need to be lying. Man, what did Christ call them? You hypocrite. Look at your own self first. Hey, Ronald, you got crumbs in your eyes. Well, so do you do, brother. You got crumbs in your eyes. What makes you better than me? Oh, here it comes. Here it goes. Jumping ahead. Thou hypocrite. Cast out, <laughs> cast out first the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. So we all got to make sure that we going into this battle fresh and sharp before we start pointing out stuff, because people in the devil is going to make sure your stuff is on blast. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doeth corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Good goes with the good, and the bad goes with the bad, no matter how you try to slice it, or try to hide it, deceive others. Like you of the good tree. You preaching about the Sabbath, but you can't keep it. You preaching how to grow your beard in, but you can't grow it in properly. It's like you hypocrite. That's why I don't show these, these abominable tattoos on my body. It makes me a hypocrite. The only thing I can say is like, yeah, I didn't know, but hopefully the Most High forgives me. Should I have gotten them? No. And try to warn people, hey, brother, sister, don't do that. Don't disgrace your temple that way. Hopefully I can get them removed one day. I guess when I get a new body. Let's see, 44. For every tree is known by his fruits. For the thorn of men, the thorns of men do not gather figs, nor of the bramble brush gather their, uh, their grapes. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, bring forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're going to eventually tell on yourself exactly what you're thinking. And that's going to determine the type of fruit that's in your body. 
And what tree? Are you are you in the tree like Eve was with the knowledge of good and evil? Or was you over here with the tree of life? But you ain't going to be able to pretend. That fruit going to show whether you believe or not. And you can look the part. Have your head wrap, have on your skirt, have on your fringes and blue border. But as soon as you open your mouth, it's like, man, something ain't quite right about that sister or brother. Did you hear this, that, and the other? Did you hear anything about Christ that came out their mouth? They missed the whole purpose of the scriptures. He said he come in the volume of the book, and he didn't have nothing to say about Christ in his whole sermon or whatever. The truth about Christ. 46. And why, and why call ye, and why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? And that's the question for tomorrow. Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. Not the Lord of Sunday church. They're going to be calling on him tomorrow. Lord, Lord this, Lord, Lord that. But not doing nothing he says. Going to get right out of church tomorrow and go to the store and purchase dinner. There's probably going to be some abominable food that they're going to cook and then ask the Lord to bless it. Why do you call on him if you're not going to do what he says? 47. Whosoever cometh to me and hears my saying and doeth them, I will show you I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on rock. And when the flood arose and the uh, when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the, uh, that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. So if your spiritual storehouse is built on Christ, and he called Peter the rock, if it's built on that rock, then they can say whatever they want to say. You in a cult, you done lost your mind, What's some of the other criticisms we get? But those are the main ones for now. You're in a cult, you done lost your mind, all that. And you're going to be like, nope, I ain't moving. I still ain't going to your church. 49. But he that heareth, <coughs> excuse me, he that heareth and not doeth is like a man with a foundation built, a house upon the earth, and against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruins of that house was great. <clears throat> so if you're not getting rooted in this, and your foundation is not in Christ, oh, it ain't going to take much. It ain't going to even be the coat, and you crazy. It's just going to be like, it don't take all that. He judges me by my heart. He knows my heart. Not knowing what Jeremiah said about the heart through the Spirit, that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? They're going to tell you, you, he knows my heart. Yeah, he knows that you're a wicked person. That's why you're not trying to keep none of his law, statutes, and commandments. That's why you're not even paying attention to Christ because he's going to force you to change your way. You're going to understand that he can see through all of your mess. Hopefully to change your life. Let's go to Matthew. Chapter 15. We start in verse 7. He starts out with what we're, what we're talking about. The leaven, of the, uh, the leaven of the hypocrisy. Ye hypocrites. Ye, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy... Of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They all, yeah, most high dibs, and they ain't even talking about, Lord this, Jesus that, I love Jesus. 
But Jesus says, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. But I love Christ. So that's your mouth. That's that lip service. But their hearts are far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching the doctrines and commandments, the doctrines, the commandments of men. We're going to get together at church for what's the midnight service they have before New Year's? Watch night service. Commandment of men. Oh, we're thankful. So we're going to have a service right before Thanksgiving. We're going to show the Most High in our fruits of how much we love Him. Commandments of men. Then again, I mentioned it earlier. Some folks only go to church on Christmas and Easter. Commandments of men. You don't even find that in the Scriptures. Mother's Day is another day that they dress up and go to church. All the mothers of the church can get a flower and all of that. Commandments of men. Then they don't respect the order of the, of the scripture. It's the Most High, Christ, man, wife, children. We got Mother's Day, then Father's Day. Commandments of men. So we don't want to be guilty of this and be able to be called a hypocrite. We got to get this leaven out of our lives. If you find the hypocrisy in your lives, get rid of it. Repent. As of yesterday. Meaning you should have already repented about it. And that's the hypocrisy or the leaven of hypocrisy. I'll praise this.